Okay, uh, welcome back. Thank you all for joining again. Um, so just to quickly answer or respond to Nina's question, um, when the guidelines take time, we just persist in prayer or is there anything more we need to do? Uh, we continue to persist in prayer and uh, and while we pray, if God tells us to do something, we do that in act of obedience. But we continue to persist in prayer, Nina. Uh, as an example that we looked at Job's life in the last class is that through everything that he was going through, he was persistent in his faith. So, yeah. Yes. That one? That was being superstitious. Okay. So how is that superstitious? What does it say? So, I really don't want to go into a divert into a hist history class and do a context. Um, but what? So, when when she touched Jesus, what? How does Jesus respond? How does Jesus respond? He says, "Who touched me?" And then, what is his disciples' response? There are a lot of people. That means Jesus was being touched and rubbed by a lot of people he, because he was in the middle of the crowd. right? You know, if you're in the middle of the crowd, you're always being rubbed and touched, uh, you know. But there was something different about her. And even the disciples' response is valid. It's like, when Jesus says, who touched me? He must be like, okay, uh, yeah, Jesus, do you see this bunch of people around you? And if you ask, who touched you? Uh, anyone? Uh, why? Because it was something different about her touch, and he knew because it was almost like a substance. The power went out of him, and so uh, in Malachi, I think it says, a "Son of man shall rise with healings in his wings." If you remember that scripture, with, with healing in his wings. Now, I didn't want to go to this history lesson, is because the attire of the Jewish people back then israelites is so the cloak that they had that would come down was called as wings uh you get what i'm saying so the cloak that they would wear that would wear the men would wear would be considered as wings and so and i was just teaching youth ministry um, for the final years i was saying how these jewish children they get sent to synagogue to learn about the word of God from the age that they are three. And so the reason I'm saying this is by the time that they are 10, they are fully aware, they have the complete Old Testament by heart. And so in their language, in, in the Hebrew, when you when they when she's been taught, she must have been taught saying, the Son of Man will rise with healing in his wings. For us, it's we think it's imagery, and that's why studying the Bible and studying the culture is very important. So she knew that he is the man, son of God, and the scripture says, which I've read, that he will rise with the healing in his wings. That means there must be healing in his wings. So I'm going to touch him. And so what she did is way beyond superstition. Uh, she had faith, and she knew who this Jesus was. And no, I have not watched the chosen one. Sorry. I have not watched. Maybe I so I can't comment. I'll I'll watch it when I have the time. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's this uh, biblical teacher called, and I would like you to make a note of it and and listen to his teaching. His name is Ray R A Y. Ray Vander, V A N D E R, Lan, L A A N or L A N, Ray Vanderlan. Um, he's 
absolutely brilliant in teaching the historical cultures uh, of the Israelites. Ray Vanderland, yeah. Uh, he's awesome in the way he teaches. Um, so I would encourage you to just listen to him when you can. He's a wonderful teacher. OK, um, let's move on. Um, in answering uh, Anand's question, we also looked at the point that says, through the announcement of faith. It's like you speak faith. And to release that, you don't necessarily have to be in the same room as the other person. The other person can be in another part of the world altogether. But just look at it. Matthew chapter 8, verse 13, uh, in page number for you all. Through the announcement of faith. Uh, 166. Um, Matthew 8, 13 says, Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And this, and his servant was healed that same hour. Matthew 15, 28. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Uh, one more verse. John 4.50, it says, Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. Okay, um, now how do we exercise this through the announcement of faith? Um, through the announcement of faith. How do we, how can we do that? It's a question for you all. Internet. Oh. What, what, what? Declaring it. Oh my gosh, Rin. Declaring it is like oh, the internet. <laughs> okay, yeah, how, how else? Yeah, thank you. Nikhil, you were saying something. Through phone, okay. Huh. So you declare, okay. But like, so the point is through announcement of faith and we read these scriptures and we see how Jesus responded and how he announced faith. How can we do that? What are some of the ways that we can do that? Through announcement of faith. Practical examples, guys. This is a practical chapter. Through announcement of faith. Give me practical examples, Jira. <clears throat> Doing it practically, okay. <laughs> okay, do it practically, Ren. Show me. Sorry. When I'm going through a particular situation in my life, I keep on telling, uh, I keep on announcing uh, that uh, God can. Uh, God, the, God can bring me out of this. Yeah. So keep on announcing every day in each and every time. Yeah, keep declaring. You said it. Yeah, keep declaring it. Or if someone says, say, uh, either one of you come and says, okay, you know, I'm going through this. Uh, nothing seems to be happening. I don't seem to get a job. Right. What do you say? How would you pray? Your friend comes to you and says, like, dude, you know what? I've been praying. I'm not finding a job. How would you announce faith? I declare in Jesus' name that the job that you are seeking for will come to you. I declare free, uh, favor. You, you get what I'm saying, right? Oh, someone's praying for healing. You know, my mother is going through this, uh, you know, this, whatever it is. It's like in Jesus' name, I declare you are healed. You know what I'm saying? All of that is just announcing uh, faith, okay? Uh, so, that's another guideline through the announcement of faith, through acting in faith. A um, couple of scriptures for us through acting in faith. Matthew chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, that he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Okay, another scripture, Matthew 12, 13. And then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored as a whole as the other. 
Okay, and one more, John 9, 7. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Okay, so there's a word that's been declared over you, and uh, God is asking you, inviting you to act on that faith. And all of these scriptures is just an example of that. So when you pray for another indi individual, we keep doing this, isn't it? You're like, hey, why don't you stretch your hands and say, is it still paining? Uh, is it healed? Do something that you could not do. Can you do it? Are you with me? Right. So that is acting in uh, faith. Uh, like in, in, even in church during ministry time, towards the end, when pastor has finished praying, he will ask, is there any testimonies? Uh, can you try doing something that you could not do before? Isn't it? And you trying to do that is just an act acting on faith. Are you guys with me? Okay, so there are times when the Holy Spirit may lead us to tell the sick person to act, act on their faith. And so um, we must be sensitive to the leading uh, of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that is through acting in faith. And people act in, uh, when people act in faith, Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 and 22. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Okay. Um, and I mean, and the woman was made well from that hour. Okay, uh, one more scripture, Mark, Mark chapter 2, verse 3 and 5. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. Can you imagine the scene? Your, the roof of your home is being ripped apart. So a sick person can be brought down just to be preyed upon. Uh, I mean, talk about an act of faith. Uh, it's, it's just seeing how far are you willing to go uh, you know, to express your faith. Um, so when people act uh, in faith, I mean, we've spoken about faith so much in these guidelines. Uh, you know, your faith, personal faith, expressing faith, declaring faith, acting in faith. Uh, wow, wow, wow. Okay, uh, another guideline is through the gifts of the Holy Spirit is simply the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Um, God works healing through the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, usually this would be the operation of the gifts of healings and or the words of knowledge sometimes accompanied with the working of miracles. Um, now has anyone here while you're praying, uh, and I know with during the supernatural hour, you receive a word of knowledge or you have this image of whatnot. Uh, have you had a word of knowledge for someone's healing? Or an image of some sort? It's okay, you didn't have. I'm not going to fail you or something, guys. Everybody looks so depressed. It's like, oh, gosh, no, I didn't. Huh? Yeah, so uh, that's another possibility. That's, again, the Holy Spirit demonstrating the wonder-working power of Jesus in and through us, right? That's simply demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit that is working through us, through the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, uh, I mean, there are time and time again where uh, this is, for example, yesterday while leading worship, I felt like God is... Uh, these words kind of pop up. I don't know how it does, but it impresses in your heart, saying restoration of identity and boldness. Now, I was leading worship. This was during the ministry time. I heard restoration, identity, and boldness. This is while I was just singing. And then the person who was leading the ministry time, he declares as saying, God is releasing the spirit of boldness. I'm like, you know, so it's the same spirit. And those who have ears to hear will hear it, isn't it? And so when you declare that, uh, and then at the end of the, uh, the service, a person comes and testifies, saying, it's like, you know, when you said restoration of identity, because every decision that I would make was based out of fear. Now I feel like God is giving me the spirit of boldness and not timidity. You get what I'm saying? So the, what, what is happening there is, again, Holy Spirit coming and just demonstrating the wonder-working power of Jesus. And there's been times 
uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but you have like an image of an X-ray where you can see a a, a backbone sp or spine, right, coming into alignment. And you, s I would have never heard these words like disc bulge, right? And so you hear those words disc bulge. Okay, so you know some there's someone here with. Uh, you know, your discs being bulged, that's what the doctor has said, and uh, God is healing. Do you release those words? So it's no good if I just see that image, it's like, oh, x ray, wow, image, backbone, wow, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Don't declare it. You get what I'm saying? Yes? Um, and there could be times where you release a prophetic word saying, okay, you know, there are those who are here with addiction, struggling with addiction. It could be substance or pornography, or whatever. So as you release that, you know, that word of uh, prophetic word that the Holy Spirit puts through you, that those chains are being broken. And all of that is just another expression of you being obedient to hearing God's voice and then declaring it, and then another person being set free. Are you with me? Right. Um. So one of those. I hope that we have not overcomplicated the subject and that is not the desire right ministering healing and deliverance with everything that we've covered with the principles and this and that and seven keys and whatnot uh, i really hope that we have not complicated this but it just for in my opinion it comes down to these two things uh now the disciples of jesus did not have the bible like we have they did not attend bible college like we did they had the best jesus and Holy Spirit. So let's not overcomplicate it, guys. I just want to remind us. I just felt like I need to remind you uh, is it all boils down to your personal relationship with Him. Are you with me? Young people ask me this question all the time uh, How do I know if God is speaking to me? Right? How do I know that this is God speaking to me? So uh, if I were to ask this question to you guys, um, I want you to tell me which is the most important word in this question. Okay? I want you to tell me which is the most important word in this question. How do I know God's voice? Which is the important word there? I'm not going to say most important. Which is the important word? How do I know God's voice? Sorry? No? <laughs> no, yes. No is the important word. Right? Um, we all know the voice of our best friend or our favorite singer. You can, rec you can hear it, recognize and say, OK, Asha is talking on top. Right? Hi, Pastor Roshan. <laughs> like, okay, Asha's in the house, right? Uh, oh gosh, it's getting recorded also. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but the point is, you know it because you know the person, isn't it? And once I know who the person is, I will automatically know what the person is saying, isn't it? Yes or no? And so that's the fun fundamental foundation of this whole thing is if you know God, you will know his voice. Right? I'm making this point simply because in this ministry of healing and deliverance, with everything that we've learned, with the keys and principles and guidelines and whatnot, is not to put God in a box. Don't make that mistake. Right? We're learning about everything he's done, the way he functions, and he will continue to do that. But how alert is your spirit to his voice? Right? Is your spirit awake and constantly like an antenna? Oh, he's God saying something. Is God saying something? Is God saying something? You will never know. My God might tell you to take one glass of water and throw it on someone's face. <laughs> you will never know, right? Uh, and at the beginning, it'll be like it'll sound so crazy, isn't it? But are you obedient enough to take that step of faith and do it? 
I'm being crazy, but you know what I'm saying, right? So all of this boils down to this one thing is you have to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's as simple as that. And how are you going to be sensitive to his leading? By getting to know him. And how do you get to know him? By spending time with him. It's not complicated, right? How do you spend time with him? Huh? <laughs> Keep your phones aside. <laughs> Log off Instagram. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Um, next guideline. Um, through the healing anointing, um, that's again in line with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, through special anointings. Um, let's look at Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 16. Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 16. It says, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all. They were, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick, excuse me, sorry, out, of, out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities wow, to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, they were all healed. A multitude gathered from surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Um, right? So. We must be sensitive and recognize this and flow with the Holy Spirit. Again, now we see that this happened, that Peter's shadow healed the people. Uh, in, and I don't recall reading anything after that where it's happened, but then it did. Now, how can Peter's shadow heal so someone? Only if he's being overshadowed by the Most High? Right. And so people recognize that. And um, and it, this one says through special anointings. Right? Like I just said, God can ask you to take a glass of water and throw it on someone. Um, are you ready to do that? Right? Pe I mean, if this was documented back then, it's like, OK, everybody's lined up. Now Peter's going to walk. His shadow is going to heal people. Imagine the news on social media. Imagine the news back then itself is like these people are mad, right? Uh, and so, um, some of the things that God might ask you to do will be very scary. It will all come down to, you know, how solid is your relationship with Him and how well you know, how well are you able to discern His voice? Are you guys with me? Okay, uh, next guideline is through repentance and renunciation of uh, sin. Repentance and renunciation of sin. Matt, John chapter 5, verse 14. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. Okay, where is this? Um, yeah, so that's John chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, so it says, See, you have been made well, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. John chapter 9, verse 1 and 3 says, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Okay, so um, not all sickness is indicative of personal sin in the individual. Um, however, it is possible that there could be sin in the individual's life that has opened door to the physical sickness. Now, uh, what does that mean? Not all sickness is indicative of a personal sin in the individual. That means not all sickness is because of a person of a person's sin however there can be a certain sin that a person has been living in and that could that could have opened doors for the enemy to bring in disease or sickness 
etc okay so um, how do you minister or receive healing this one of the guidelines is through repentance and renunciation of sin again be sensitive to the leading of the holy spirit if god tells you to tell him to repent of sins you tell that person you don't go to every person and say that i know what you did last night brother <laughs> you know what i'm saying Okay, uh, so be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And another way to minister is through deliverance. Um, Matthew 9, 32, 33, it says, As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man, mute and demon-possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke. And the multitudes marveled, saying it was, uh, it was never seen like this in Israel. Okay, uh, just look at those choice of words with me. Please pay attention to this scripture, okay? As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man, mute and demon-possessed. Mute, that means he could not speak. And he was demon-possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke. Matthew 12, 22. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed, blind and mute, and he healed him, so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. Okay, so blindness, deafness, dumbness, and a hunchback being caused due to the presence of demons. That's in uh, the hunchback is in Luke chapter 13, verse 11 to 13. You read about it. Now, again. It will all come down to the question, uh, question and the equation at your end. Are you able to discern that this is the evil spirit? Or are you going to cast out demons out of everybody who is sick? Your tooth is paining. Come, brother, let me cast you out. Altar call. Are you guys following what I'm saying, guys? Right? Through deliverance. Okay, so uh, be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit uh, and, and be led as He leads uh, to minister and receive healing. Okay? Uh, and another one, and one of my favorite ones, is through the exercise of faith when celebrating the Lord's table. Now, we saw about exercising faith in many ways, right? You speak, you declare, you believe, etc., uh, etc. Et but one of the most beautiful ways where you can exercise faith is through celebrating Lord's table. Are you with me? Right? And so here are the notes. It says that um, with the Lord Jesus instituted what we call the Lord's Supper or the Lord's table for us to do so often in remembrance of Him. Each time we partake of the Lord's table, we proclaim the Lord's death. We partake in the Lord's table discerning the Lord's body. We recognize what Christ completed for us in his body on the cross. Right. So as you partake of the communion, you say, okay, those you, if you're sick, as you partake of this, we remember and we remind each other saying, okay, because of what he's done for us by his stripes, we are healed. Yeah. And so uh, you exercise your faith when celebrating the Lord's table. And uh, just a couple more things, and I'll close. Is uh, through the use of prayer cloths, uh, through unusual methods, uh, and uh, ministering healing one on one. Um, guys, again, uh, I mean, I just probably end with this thing, this thought here is uh, in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12, we see that, uh, okay, let's just quickly read. In Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12, it says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from, from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Okay? Um, now, I decide to work through that, uh, minister healing through that. Uh, but just a word of caution here is when using, uh, say, cloths or items or objects, uh, sometimes if people are not instructed correctly, uh, they can end up making the item that was used to bring them healing and deliverance as an object of worship. So if we are not taught well, um, we will begin to worship the piece of cloth. <laughs> Paul, 
you know, build one altar for it and all of that start selling anointing cloth 15 rupees <laughs> okay um guys in any in all of these things I, i'll pause i'll stop here for today's session is um i don't begin to worship or you know the process or the method don't put god in no box uh, but just be led by the Holy Spirit in everything that we do as you minister and receive healing. Is that clear? Yeah? Okay. Cool. So we'll stop here and we'll continue from the next class. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. See you all. Take care.